Indochino is the world's most exciting made-to-measure men's warehouse company. Unparalleled fit and comfort with suits and shirts made to your exact measurements in a wide selection of high-quality fabrics and colors. Get any premium Indochino suit for just $359 at Indochino.com when entering live at checkout. That's Indochino.com, promo code LIVE, for any premium suit for just $359 and free shipping. Indochino is also expanding into casual clothing. You're made to measure chinos at an introductory price of $79. NFL Live on the air. Here's our timeline. Adam Schefter reporting former Titans receiver Richard Matthews is on the move. He's headed to the Jets. And the Jets not the only New York team making a move. The Giants have traded former first-round pick Eli Apple to the New Orleans Saints. This is in exchange for a fourth-round pick next year and a seventh in 2020. We are still a week away from the trade deadline, 4 o'clock Eastern next Tuesday, and we've seen a lot of moves in the past few days. Happy to be here with you. Wendy Nix, Dan Graziano, Tim Hasselbeck, and Coach John Fox. Uh, we'll start right here. The decision, uh, Dan, to move Eli Apple to New Orleans. Can you tell us uh, some context, if you will? Second, uh, second first round pick from 2015 to be dealt in two days. So interesting. Uh, you know, you have turnover in leadership there with the Giants. You have Dave Gettleman coming in as GM, replacing longtime GM Jerry Reese, and really moving on from a lot of the guys that that Reese had brought in, including now. Eli Apple. This is a player a lot of people were surprised he was back with the Giants at all this year. Had some real issues last year with the outgoing coaching staff. Uh, Landon Collins, his teammate, went on the radio and called him a, a locker room cancer, like on the record, out loud on the radio. So this is a guy that had some serious issues with the team prior to this year. Uh, everything I had been told was that those had been resolved and he was in good shape. 23-year-old guy had started playing better, but um, they decided to move on from him because... Um, now they're moving forward. You know, he had met with the new leadership with Dan Gettleman and Pat Sermer at the start of the, the season and, and was assured a clean slate. But there could be many reasons, Tim, that factored in to, well, to this yeah. choice. Listen, I, sometimes things get repaired in a locker room, but, you know, it, it's never quite the same sure. or the way that you would want it to be. And I think, you know, in, in terms of that, look, I, I think the Giants, when you look at where they are this season and then you think about where the Saints are aspiring to go this season I actually think it ends up making a lot of sense and then if you think about the compensation you're talking about a you know a a fourth and a seventh in future you know in future drafts for a guy that's played a lot of football and certainly had some moments and he's had some you know kind of you know some issues as Dan alluded you know in terms of dealing with the coaching staff and dealing with uh you know guys on his team but uh, we know the Saints have a good pass rush we know that they've got a good corner opposite Eli Apple um, and they've got a good group of linebackers. I think they're trying to bolster up the secondary a little bit to, to have a legitimate shot at making a run. No doubt. I mean, you heard some, even some grumblings you know, or possibilities about even Patrick Peterson. You know, they're looking for a guy to line up opposite Marshawn Lattimore, who's a Pro Bowl rookie, mm-hmm. young corner. Eli's young. He's got length. Uh, he's got, you know, deep speed. You know, maybe you know, it'll look better for him in uh, uh-huh. New Orleans. Well, the Giants released Eric Flowers. He was the ninth overall pick in 2015. That was October 9th. Now they trade Eli Apple, the 10th pick in 2016. So if you're doing the math, that's two recent top 10 picks for the Giants gone in a span of two weeks. And they certainly aren't the only team. Speaking of trades, it was the Cowboys who made a headline-grabbing move yesterday. They uh, opted to get Dak Prescott some help trading for wide receiver Amari Cooper. This in exchange for a first-round pick in the upcoming draft. Oakland, by the way, will now have three first-round picks in 2019 after also getting the Bears pick in last month's Khalil Mack trade. So here's why Dallas did this. The 24-year-old has averaged 3.8 yards of separation on targets this season, and according to Next Gen Stats, it's the fourth best among wideouts with at least 25 targets. And Dak has struggled to get separation out of his receivers since the start of last year. His target's getting just 2.9 yards of separation at that time. That's the shortest mark for any quarterback with at least 250 attempts. And, Coach, I'll start with you. Let's let's look first at Amari Cooper's impact on this Dallas offense. You know, I think, you know, they've been looking for receivers all season long. And I think uh, the acquisition of Amari Cooper is going to help them. They have to evaluate where Dak Prescott is. And... How better to do that than make sure you have some guys around him that, that help that evaluation. Here you can see, 
He's really quick. He's fluid in and out of breaks. He's got good explosion. He's got good catch radius. You know, he was a Pro Bowl receiver uh, two years ago. So he's done it. He's made that uh, transition from college football to pro football and pro coverages. He can get off the press. He does have excellent quickness. Good nod here on Jaco- on. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, Roby. Uh, Roby. All right, but excellent move out of the break there. And, and again, he's a guy that's 24, so he's got a lot of good football ahead of him, and he's got a lot of ability. I think he helps the Cowboys. And what, the issue we just ends up being, Wendy, is, is we're doing the good and the bad. And what Coach said is exactly right. 24 years old, had two seasons where he had over a thousand yards receiving, had seven touchdowns last year on what was a down year. He definitely has been plagued by some drops. Now, I do think that there are coaches believe that you can coach guys out of drops. Somebody that has good hands, which I certainly believe that he does in terms of it being more of a concentration thing. But I don't think there's any question that he is an improvement at the position for the Dallas Cowboys. And then when you think of the skill set of the other guys that they have, Michael Gallup and his speed, Cole Beasley and his working inside. Now, all of a sudden, you add somebody with kind of a, a different group of skills, you know, a different skill set, and that really can run the entire route tree in Amari Cooper. And I think now, to your point, Coach, you have the opportunity to better evaluate Dak Prescott and figure okay. out, you know, well, how invested in him can you be going for? That, that's another layer because they, they have a decision to make at the end of this season, Dan, and they need to know, I would think, In fact, I would think it's imperative if Dak Prescott is the future quarterback of this team. They do. I mean, they say they still believe in him. And look, talking to people in that organization last night and today, I mean, they they felt like Amari Cooper was a move for them for not just for this year, but for the long term, 24 years old. They looked at him and said they believed him to be better than whoever they were going to pick in the first round next year at wide receiver. So there goes the pick uh, for him. In terms of they'll have to get him signed, obviously, but it's the Cowboys. They, they, they sign their guys if they want to, and that, that's, that goes back a long time. They've been looking for a wide receiver since the offseason. They tried to sign Sammy Watkins, got outbid by the Chiefs. So this is a move that's been brewing for a while, and, and they just believe this is a guy that um, has been a number one type of wide receiver, and while he isn't right now based on current performance, that he could be again. Well, there are two sides to this equation, as there always are with trades, and I mean— I- you just really cannot argue that Oakland's waving the, the white flag, at least on the 2018 season. They will now end up, Coach, with three first-round picks. Are you confident in the plan here or the direction that Oakland seems to be heading long-term? Because we know in the short term they are what they are. I, I definitely like their plan. I think for them to get a first-round pick for Amari Cooper at this stage of the season uh, you know, is a great move. They're going to have five first-round picks in the next two seasons you know, to get that better. Rather, they were 6-10. and 10. Rather than sit there and stand pat and just kind of hope you get your picks as you go, you know, they've made some aggressive moves here with both the Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper trade to, to better, you know, infuse some talent into that offense. Uh, of course, we or know, though, those, those, those picks, I mean, they, they matter when you get them right, you know, or when they're productive, because ha- just having a volume of picks doesn't necessarily guarantee long-term success. No, but what having a volume of, of high picks does is enables you to control the draft, enables you to get who you want, right? So if they have three first-round picks next year and there's a player they want at number one and they don't happen to have that pick, now you can get them. So, so if they wanted, you know, if they need a quarterback and a pass rusher, they'll be able to get, you know, both of them probably in the first round in the next couple of years. This is about building a team that hits the ground running when they get to Las Vegas they're in moving. 2020. They that, are I moving. Mean, that's, they're obviously all. They're not going to come out publicly and say that while they're still trying to get people to come to the games in Oakland. But it's clear that that's what's going on, and they want to be as as young and vibrant and exciting as they can possibly be when that gets going. One piece of the puzzle that is in place, at least right now, and I say right now because anything is possible, is the quarterback, Derek Carr. He did say this via tweet today. I'm a Raider. It's not a popular thing to be a Raider right now, but I am, and I love it. I love the struggle of trying to fight back for our city when not a lot of people believe in us. People can try all they want to tear us apart, but it's not happening to the real ones. Fair enough, but we will pull out the panic button just in case we need it, and I'm not saying that we do. But I'll ask you this. Panic or patience when it comes to the Oakland Raiders under John Gruden? Tim? Look, look, I'm going to be patient, and I wish I wasn't saying patient right after Derek Carr's tweet because if I'm Derek Carr, I'm not being patient. But I think, look, he's on a 10-year deal. I mean, the reality is is that, that people don't get that type of security in the NFL. And so we're not used to seeing these long-range plans. 
because guys don't usually get a chance to make long range plans. It's usually you have to win now. And so I think under John Gruden, you have to realize that like, we're still talking like like in 2025, okay? Like like that's what we're talking about here. Like, are they going to be good in 2025? Like, I'm sorry, coach, but you never yeah. got that no. luxury. Well, you never yeah, got to be able to it's a 10-year contract, but, but I mean, that, you're assuming a lot of variables. He whatever, wants to Wendy, stay. They want him to stay. I know he gets paid, you know, like, but like, like, listen, that'd be a lot of money to walk away from. Well, it, okay, it, it is so, a lot of money no matter how so, you slice it. And so I think you have to be patient in that regard under Gruden, but. That locker room is there's because that's listen, a different deal. Those guys don't have ten year deals. No, they do not. So I'm patient, but in a weird way. Okay, well, we, weird <laughs> the operative word there. We'll just leave it there. Less. Don't yeah. throw me yeah. the button over yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel like he's. Oh, you're not going to hit it either. But anyways, I'm going to stay patient <laughs> yeah. as well. I think you know. Back yeah. to John yes. Gruden's point early on was they were six and ten, all right, with these two marquee players. Bottom line, and they weren't going anywhere. To sit and stand pat. I think would be the mistake. I think right now with all those picks, uh, and to Dan's point, you can move around that draft, you can parlay that, and just target some key guys that are going to put you over the hump. You know, whether that's a quarterback or whether that's another pass rusher, whether that's a shutdown corner, those are all key pieces to getting over that hump in a very, very competitive division right now that they're really not going anywhere, whether they would have traded those picks or not. You guys are making a lot of good points. I just, I, I just feel like I want to hit it. You want to hit it? I, so I, 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 I just, just women's right intuition. Look, I don't listen, know about, I, you know. I, look, I understand I just, Derek Carr's tweet. And Reggie but, McKenzie's but tweet yesterday. In, if you put I just, that in front of Derek, like I mean, Carr should hit it. Yeah, well, hit I'll hit it for him. It's right. Right. Perspective, you going right? to hit it? Like, you think the Raiders are going to be good this year and now you're panicking that they might not? Yeah, then yes. But who thought that? And especially right. sitting there uh, with the record they have right now. So, Patience is literally the only option here. It stinks. Oh, if you're come on. Oakland, There's always an option. If you're, if you're an Oakland Raiders <laughs> fan and you're still shelling out money to park and buy tickets <laughs> and, Dan's gonna tell you and not to. concessions at, at the games for the next year, maybe two years, that, that's a shame. But the big picture, he gave a coach a 10-year contract and obviously free reign with the roster. He's going to do what he thinks is best for the long term. And the long term is in Vegas, baby. All right. Raiders ownership on line one for Dan. He said it. We didn't. Keep going. Uh, listen, the Raiders' struggles date back to last season, and those points are fair. They've produced a 1-9 record since Week 14 last year. They've been outscored by 109 points during that time. Both of those, by the way, the worst marks in the NFL. And the offense has struggled to find the end zone, the fourth fewest touchdowns in the league, which will lead you, of course, to a rebuild, build, which is what we're seeing. So here's to wrap up the trade so far. This is from Adam Schefter. He will be busy this week and into next week.